What do you get when you combine colorful fabric scraps, a zipper, and the quilt as you go method? You get a scrappy fabric quilted zipper pouch. I'm Jan Howell. In today's sewing tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make these cute zipper pouches. In a previous tutorial, I showed you how to make a zipper pouch, but this zipper pouch has a little bit different design. I'm going to be showing you a few different techniques and tricks for inserting a zipper and these zipper tabs and it has a little bit different bottom to it, which I think you'll really like. If you're enjoying my content, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. That way you can be notified when I put new videos up. You'll be the first to be notified and you don't wanna miss out on anything. There's some fun things coming. Let's begin by going over the materials and items that you'll need for the project. You'll need the pattern downloaded and printed, and I, of course, will put the link in the description below. You'll need a piece of fabric for the lining. The rest of the fabric, you'll be using some scraps from your stash. As you can see, I have a bunch of different colors of fabric scraps that I've been saving. And if you want to check out how I organize my fabric and fabric scraps, I have a tutorial showing you how to do that. So you might be interested in that. Well, I have gone through and found some fun pieces that I want to include in my zipper pouch. They can be different sizes. They can be big or small. You can combine them. You'll need a sewing machine, of course, the, a zipper foot, along with a regular sewing foot, a seam gauge or measuring tape, a turning stick. You'll need a pair of fabric scissors, but I love using a rotary cutter and a mat. It makes cutting these strips so much more precise and a lot quicker. Pins, or you can use these fabric clips, which I really like. You'll need a zipper that's at least eight inches long, and I'll be showing you how to shorten a zipper if you want to use a longer zipper. This wash away wonder fabric tape is really nice and helpful to use. It's not very, it doesn't cost very much money. I'll put the link in the description below, but it really does make putting a zipper in a lot easier. You don't need it, of course, but it does come in handy. You'll need some kind of fabric stabilizer. This is called soft and stable. It's really good for bags and things just to give it, give your bag some um, form and stabilize the fabric. You can also use cotton quilting batting if you want. It will work as well. And you'll need an iron and ironing board. And of course, if you want to add label to the bag, have that handy. And I have a tutorial showing you how to make these tags if you want to custom made and they're really easy to make. Let's start by getting our pieces cut out. I have cut out two of the outer panel stabilizer pieces. Now the stabilizer is going to be wider than the actual cut of the outer panel when we get it all sewn together. And these panels are 10 by seven and a half inches. I have also cut out a bottom panel piece and the bottom panel fabric. And that measures 10 by three and a half inches. You'll cut out a rectangle using the pattern piece then that will be our zipper tabs. If it's been a while since you've changed a rotary blade, you might wanna do that. It just makes the cutting the strips so much easier and you'll be surprised how much better they cut if you have a sharp blade. So the strips need to be eight inches long and you can they can be all sizes. You can combine several strips together, but they just need to, to at least be eight inches long so I'm gonna sew this, these two together to make one strip, and I'm going to sew these two with this combination. So kind of just play around with your scraps and see what kind of look you want for both sides, and then we'll sew them together. I'm going to sew these two strips together, and then I'll add them to the bottom of that blue piece. To reduce bulk, I'm going to open up that seam. You can just finger press it if you want to, or you can use your iron. Okay. 
All right, now that I have my strips cut, they're at least eight inches or longer. We can always cut them down. And I've decided which order I want them to be in. We're ready to do the quilt as you go method. I have my stabilizer. You take the first strip that you want to put down, place it right side facing up along the edge. Take your next piece, place it right side facing down. And I'm just going to start sewing at the edge of the stabilizer down to the bottom. Using the press, my presser foot as my guide, be a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Flip that piece over and just hand finger press it open and then we're going to top stitch just about an eighth of an inch from the edge. I'm going to increase my stitch to from two and a half to three for top stitching. I'm going to bring it back up to the top and then put my presser foot along the edge of the stitching there and sew down again. There's no need to back stitch. So we're going to go ahead and quilt this section. Bring the presser foot along the edge of the last stitching line and start sewing down again. You want to keep that fabric on the right pulled over to the right. Take your next fabric strip, place it right side facing down. Looks like I need another strip. I'm going to flip it over and come back to this panel that hasn't been quilted yet. do the same thing for the bottom panel piece. I have my stabilizer. I'm going to clip it in place just to keep it from shifting until I get halfway through. Except this time we're going to sew horizontally. So that's the bottom panel. Let's take it all to the cutting board and square it all up. These outer panels need to be cut nine by six and a half inches. So if you have one of these square cutters, that's great. If not, just use your, your other ruler. So let's find that top edge of the foam. Get that six and a half inches. Okay, so there's one panel. Let's cut the other one. I have my two panels. The final cut for the bottom panel is nine inches by two and a half inches. So we'll square that up. 
Now that we have our panels cut out and quilted, we're going to make our zipper tabs. This is just one piece that we'll cut in half. The first thing you'll do is fold it in half and press. And then we're going to fold it the edge to the crease, fold the other edge to the center crease, press, and then we're going to fold that in half, lining up those folded edges. Cut that in half to make two tabs. We'll set those aside. Now let's get our zipper ready. And you can use a zipper from the store that is packaged like this. There's a lot of different sizes and colors. You want the zipper to be one inch shorter than your panel. And our panel ends up being nine inches. So we need a zipper that's at least eight inches or it's good to give yourself some extra like nine inches. But what I'm going to do is use my zipper by the yard, which I really love. On my last tutorial, I showed you a little bit about how to use those. And I love them because you can customize the colors of the zipper pull. This bundle that I got came with a lot of different colors and it's like 36 inches of each color. So it's great, it's wonderful. I'm stocked up for zippers for quite a while. So I'm using the black zipper. I can choose whatever zipper color of zipper pull since I'm using uh, having a green tab. I thought it might be kind of fun to have maybe a green zipper pull on that black zipper. I'm going to cut my zipper to eight inches. And when you're cutting over the teeth, if it's metal teeth, you'll want to be really careful and just cut or in between. You kind of have to zigzag a little bit to cut through those teeth. Plastic teeth are not a problem. We're going to attach the zipper pull. I'm gonna pull the zipper apart. I'm not gonna pull it all the way. The rounded edge of the zipper is where I'll insert the end of the zipper. So just kind of shove them up in there and you'll hear a little click or you'll feel a little click when it's in place and then you can start pulling that zipper. Pull down the zipper. Now we can apply tabs. Your zipper tab, open it up and place the end of the zipper and then fold that over so the folded edges are even. Clip that in place until we get to the sewing machine. I'm just using a regular straight stitch and I'm going to stitch right on the inside of the fold of the tab. And you want to make sure, turn it over, that you caught both layers. So we're good there and let's do the other side. And to keep the thread from bunching up on the other side, you hold the thread, the needle thread, just for a couple stitches. Take your scissors and clip off the ends of the zipper tabs even with the edge of the zipper. All right, now we get to sew the zipper in. Decide which edges you want to be on the top. I'm going to use this wonder tape. It really does make this easier, but it's not crucial if you don't have it. Place the right side of the zipper to the right side of an outer piece. I'm gonna apply that strip of tape first so it's sticky on this side and then we'll pull off a strip of paper and it will be sticky on the other side. So it's basically just a double-sided tape. When you wash it, it will disappear. Let's peel off the paper and we're going to place the zipper right side facing down onto the outer piece. We're going to leave a half inch on each side Perfect. Place it along the edge and just stick it down. Now, if you didn't want to use the tape, just simply clip it in place or pin it in place. Apply another piece of tape along the wrong side of the zipper. 
Take your lining fabric and line that up with the edge of the zipper. You can pin or clip it in place. You'll need to grab your zipper foot for your sewing machine. Mine looks like this and place it on your machine. Since I'll be sewing from the right, I'm going to attach it to this left bar here. That will allow me to sew really close to the zipper but still have the pressure of the foot. Make sure that your zipper is unzipped halfway to make sure that you can tell where the needle is coming down so it's not going to be really, you don't want it really tight against the teeth but just maybe about an eighth of an inch away from it. You can do it further if you want. I'm going to turn my hand wheel towards me that'll bring my needle down and it, yeah that's probably the right um, distance. And you'll back stitch at the beginning at the end of the seam. You're going to sew down until you start feeling that zipper pull. Leave your needle down, lift up your presser foot and reach underneath and pull the zipper towards the other side. Out of the way and continue sewing down. Now you'll apply another strip of tape there or just pin I'm going to show you what it would look like if you were just using fabric clips. Take the other lining piece, right side facing down, we'll place it onto the back side of the zipper, making sure that we have half inch seam allowance. Need to scoot it over just a bit. Take the other lining piece, the right side facing down, lining up the top and the edges. So you can see how that tape does come in handy, kind of keeps, when you're working with three layers like this, you kind of have to keep putting the, reattaching the pins, but see how it's, it's still very doable. And of course you could always use pins. Okay, now that we're all clipped in place, we're going to do that same thing, so all the way down, adjusting that zipper pull. I'm going to bring it down a little bit. And zip that up a little bit. And now we're going to top stitch. We're going to press that seam towards the panel so you want to pull the lining away You're getting a good edge there and give it a press I'm going to sew in the same stitching that I did on my zipper tab I'm just leaving my zipper foot on, hold that top thread for just a few stitches. I'm going to come to the corner, leave my needle down, lift up my presser foot, pivot, make sure that's pulled tight. See how nice that looks. All right, on to the next step. Now we need to sew the bottom panel onto the front panel. Pin it in place. Just sew all the way down using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. And the 3 8 inch seam allowance will be the edge of the presser foot here. And now fold the other panel, front panel up line up the bottom edges and do the same thing I'm 
All right, the next thing we're going to do is sew it all together. Take that bottom panel, just let it fold in on itself, lining up the seams and clip it in place. If you want to add a label to the outside of the bag, take your label. I have a tutorial showing you how to make these cute labels. You can do letters or I have different designs. I'll put the link in the description below. But this is the time that you want to apply that. You could even apply it before we sewed onto the, the bottom panel. But you'll take the folded, these are the cut edges, you'll take the folded edge and place it inside and you want to make sure that you leave enough for the seam allowance and so it's not cutting, we're not sewing into the design and then I'll baste it in place. And this is what's really important is that we line these, we get these seams lined up. We're going to take the zipper tab, push it towards the lining. See how that looks like that and line up that main seam. I like using a pin at this point. It keeps it, I think, a little better aligned. Now the lining piece we're bringing right sides together as well. We're going to leave the, a portion of the bottom unsewn so that we can turn it right side out when we're finished. And I like using two straight pins to help me remember not to sew it closed. So it's about a three inch, three to four inch opening. And then I'll clip the rest in place. Do that same thing. Push the zipper tab towards the lining, lining up those seams. I'm just leaving my zipper foot on and the edge of this zipper foot I'm going to place along the edge of the fabric. That'll be my guide. It'll be a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Come to the corner, leave your needle down, lift up your presser foot and pivot. start getting close to that seam, I want to just take a little look again to make sure that we're all lined up. There's a lot of bulk here. This, the zipper tab edge is, it is about right there. We don't want to sew into the zipper tab. So just start sewing slowly. You can feel the bulk of the zipper tab right there. You don't want to sew into it but you want to keep the same seam allowance. Sometimes you'll have to lift up your presser foot and tuck. It will get caught on your zipper foot a little bit. So sometimes you need to get your little scissors or your pointer tool and push that down and hold it while you sew. Make sure your edges are still staying even. We're just going to sew all the way off. We're not even going to, we don't even need to sew on this bottom part. I'm going to come to the other side and sew down. Clip the corners to get rid of a little bit more of the bulk. I'm going to taper that down. I'm also going to trim down this to make the bottom pleats on the lining. Take the sides 
on each side of the lining corners there. Pull them apart and kind of feel with your fingers where the seams line up. I'm gonna put this on my cutting mat and I'm gonna find where that point is. So the point is not here. If I were to draw, extend that out, the point would be right there. Now line that up with this line. Take my another ruler, measuring down from that point, that one inch, and just draw a line. Pin that in place. Let's get the other one ready so that we can do both at the same time. Take it to the sewing machine and sew along that line. Leave a quarter inch seam allowance and clip off that corner. And then that will give you that nice boxed corner for your lining. Now here's the fun part. We're gonna reach in, turn that right side facing out. Luckily we've left that open so we can just stuff it all back down. We're gonna pull the lining out though. Take a turning stick, stick it into the hole of the lining and poke out the corners of that bottom panel. Isn't that just a cute design? A little bit different than just having a square bottom. I'm going to poke out where the these zipper tabs are. It'll look like that and you just kind of push it up. Pretty cute, aren't they? Now we need to sew the bottom of the lining closed. Pleated bottom. And I like to just stick my fingers inside and pull, give it a little pull. The fabric will naturally curl underneath. You want to do it the same seam allowance as the rest of the seam. So I'm going to pull that open. I'm going to press that and then just top stitch an eighth of an inch down that opening. Now all you do is stuff the lining down into your pouch. There you have it. What a fun project. What a great way to use up all your fun fabric quilting scraps. A little bit of a twist to the bottom of your zipper pouch. If you enjoyed that tutorial, give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to check out my other tutorials and my website, youmakeitsimple.com for other fun crafting and sewing ideas and projects. And as always, if you have a comment or a question, be sure to leave that in the comments section below. Have a great day, have fun sewing, and we'll see you in the next tutorial. Mm -hmm.